Welcome to Kitchener Fire Department. I'm sure you're wondering today why I'm dressed with this harness and everything on. Today we're gonna do a tour of our aerial truck and actually get the chance to go up in the bucket and take a look around. Um, if you have any questions during the presentation, please enter them in the chat. At the end of our presentation, we're gonna go in the front lobby and answer some of the questions. And any ones that we don't get to, uh, we'll make sure that we answer them online. So like I said, this is Kitchener Fire Department. Um, a little bit about our fire department. We have seven fire stations and every fire station has at least one truck like this, which is a pumper. So we have seven pumpers in the city. Um, the aerial truck that we're gonna see today, we actually have two of those, one station here at headquarters. The other one is at station two on uh, Lancaster Street. Now this station has some extra vehicles to it because it is headquarters. We have a platoon chief's vehicle, which is usually in front of me, but the platoon chief is out. And that's the person that would be like the principal at your school. They wear a white helmet and they tell everybody what to do. So <clears throat> every truck like this one has a captain that sits in this seat and that captain wears a red helmet. Now that red helmet would be just like your teacher. And then all the firefighters, they wear yellow helmets and those yellow helmets would be just like you guys, just like the students. So what happens is the white helmet figures out what to do, what we're gonna do at the fire. They tell the red helmets how we're gonna do it. And then the red helmets and the yellow helmets make sure it gets done. Sounds pretty simple if it works that way. Um, I mentioned that we have a couple extra trucks here. Off to my right over there is our hazmat truck. And that's for any uh, dangerous chemicals um, and any specialties like that. The other truck that we also have here, which is way over on the far end, is our rescue truck. And there's only one of those in the city. And that truck goes to um, all kinds of calls. It goes to car accidents, it goes to um, fires, it goes to the same calls the hazmat goes to. And it usually takes a pump with it though. Now we'll take a walk out to our front tarmac here, and this is where our aerial's all set, almost set up and ready to go. So Kitchener does about 16,000 calls per year. Um, we also have our dispatch center here, and our dispatch center dispatches for three full-time departments, and uh, I believe it's five volunteer departments. So they're very, very busy in there, 24 hours a day. Just a reminder to everybody, do we all know what the number is to call if you have an emergency? 911, that's right. Now, do we think an emergency is something like falling off your bike and scraping your knees? I don't think that's an emergency. But maybe if mommy fell down the stairs and she's not talking to you, then that would be an emergency and that would be a good time to call 911. And the first thing, one of the first things they're gonna ask you is what is your name and what is your address? So. Maybe after today's session, you can ask mom or dad or an older brother or sister, make sure you know your address. So come on out, we'll take a look at our aerial truck. So here's our aerial truck. This aerial truck will actually go up 30 meters. So it'll go up pretty high, um, except it can't go straight up and down like this, straight up and down like this. Um, because the truck has to be parked away from the building a little bit, so it's always a little less. This aerial at an apartment building will actually go up about seven stories. Uh, a few things about this truck. This truck is about 16 meters long, and uh, once we have the outriggers out, with the outriggers out, it's about six meters wide, so it's pretty big. If you follow me down this way, I don't know how many uh, people caught our, our session last time on the pump, but this truck has a pump just like our pump trucks do. So we can take a hose off the hydrant and hook it in here. And when we hook it in here, then we can make the water go to different parts of the truck. I'll show you a couple special parts that the water can go to. So this aerial has a great big bucket in it. And pretty soon I'm gonna be going in there and going up. One of the things here, we have a what we call a shower nozzle right up here. And that's one place that we want to make sure we can get water to because lots of times this aerial truck will be over top of a fire. And if it's over top of a fire, there's lots of heat and smoke 
and flames. So we can use this to make sure that it doesn't get too hot in this bucket. The other thing is these two great big huge nozzles up top here. And they will spray a lot of water a long way. So we use this a lot of times at larger fires. So if we had an industrial fire like at somebody's place of business or um, if we use it quite often uh, when there's a fire downtown, we can use it to get on top of buildings if we want. Or sometimes we just put the aerial up and spray water to put the fire out. So now what I'm going to get is the other firefighters that are with me. We're going to set this truck up and I'll explain it as we go along. So the very first thing that we have to make sure of whenever we set up an aerial is that it's on solid ground and that it's very, very stable because we're going to be going up a very long way and we certainly do not want this truck to tip over. <clears throat> so what they're actually doing right now is they're putting these extra pads out and these pads will take some of the weight of the truck. And then what's going to happen is uh, one of our operators is going to come back come back here and uh, they're going to extend the riggers out. And just like I told you before, these riggers make the truck very, very stable so that we can lift it up high and rotate it around to where we need to. So there's four of these out riggers or stabilizers on this truck. They have to bring all four out and then they'll bring them down. And it's important that the truck is supported, but it's also very important that the truck is level. And in a minute, I'll show you how we do that. There's some special lights on the indicator there. So he's gonna, right now, he's gonna put each one of these four legs down and just get them to touch the ground. And once they touch the ground, then what he'll do is he'll put left or right ones up or down or front or back ones up or down to get the truck level. So if you look at his controls there, we have all kinds of lights and buttons, but you'll, you'll see the uh, green buttons mean it's all the way out and all the way down. So on this one over here, you can see two green lights. That means it's good. It's down all the way and it's out all the way. And that'll keep the truck nice and, and steady. We already have our other firefighter up in the bucket over here. Oh, there we go. So now what we're gonna do is lift the uh, aerial truck out of his bed. And he's going to come over here and meet me so I don't have to climb up all those steps. So we can actually control this area aerial from a couple different spots. We can control it from right up in the bucket, which you can see right now. But at the back of this pedestal on the bottom, uh, there's a white square and you can also control it from there. Usually once the firefighters get up in the bucket, we control the bucket from up there but sometimes we just use it as a water stream so if it's only being used as a water stream then if it's only being used as a water stream um, then the operator can go down below here and control it the operator has to be very very careful of what he or she does here out front of uh, headquarters we do have some uh, we do have some power lines. We definitely don't want to touch those, you know, and then there's a flagpole over to my right over here and a building here. So we don't want to hit any of those with the, with the truck. The other thing with an aerial truck, he's going to extend that out, but so that I can get in the bucket, but he won't let that bucket touch the ground. It's really, really hard on the ladder because that ladder is built to take the kind of the pressure and the extension that it's doing right now. If he puts it on the ground, we could actually break that ladder in half. So we're always very careful of that. Here's a nice close-up shot of those nozzles. Now you can really see how big they are. There's, there's my hand with it, super big. And they will spray a lot of water and they'll put out a lot of fire in a big fat hurry. 
So one of the things that the uh, operators and the firefighters do is talk lots. So we always want to make sure that we're communicating on what's going on and what we're doing. I'm gonna snag, snag my safety rope. So safety is always our first priority. So you can see that I have a rope on the back of me here. And then I'm gonna put a helmet on. Can you hold the camera for a second? Thank you. So I'm gonna put my helmet on also. There we go, all safe now. You're very lucky today. You're gonna to go for a ride and get a view that not very many people get to see. So here's the controls that he's running. And these controls do a few things. So it can make the ladder go out and in by itself. It can make the ladder go left or right by itself. And it can make uh, the aerial go up and down. But here we go. For anybody that doesn't know where headquarters is, we're at Ottawa and Strasburg by the big um, Zare store. And the A&W that you can maybe see in the distance there. And up we go. We're going to be able to see just about the whole city pretty soon. I'm sure some of you have been over at McLennan Park, either riding your bikes on the hills or um, um, in the winter doing some toboggan trips down the hill. So there it is right there. So I keep talking about this truck going to fires and everything else. So there, way off in the distance, you can see St. Mary's Hospital. And then kind of in the middle over there is downtown Kitchener. So this job also, or this truck also has some other jobs that it can do. Uh, it, it can uh, do high and low angle rescue. So if somebody was down in a ravine and we could get the aerial truck there, we could actually extend the aerial truck out into the ravine and rappel off the end of the aerial truck. And uh, if somebody was injured, we could put them in the basket and then use the aerial truck kind of like a crane just to lift them out of the, the area. We could do the same thing from a bridge if somebody was in the water. We could extend the aerial out over the bridge and use it to rescue them out of the water. But like I said, the biggest um, thing that we use this for is firefighting at heights or if we had to rescue people out of an apartment building where there was a fire that we couldn't get to them. A couple of these trucks we'll use even in like a residential or a home fire where uh, we'll use it to put people up on the roof so that we can cut a hole in the roof to let all the smoke and the hot gases out. Makes it safer for the firefighters then. So here's a tip for everybody. If um, if you have a fire in your house, do you think it's a good idea to hide in your closet or hide in, in your, under your bed? It's definitely not. It's very, very hard for us to find you. So if there's a fire in your house and you can't get out, the best thing is to lay in the middle of your floor and wait for us to come. Don't hide. How high are we up? We're all the way up now. So this is as high as this truck goes. And you can see this wonderful view that we have up here. So like I said, you guys are so lucky today. You get, you get a view that not too many people get to see. Okay, we'll go back down now. Thank you. Yep. So we'll take the ride going back down again. Maybe I'll show you headquarters. There's the top of headquarters. So like I said, this is Ottawa and Strasbourg. This is our headquarters station. So this is where um, there's 14 firefighters stationed here, plus our chief and our deputies, all of our admin staff, our um, great mechanics. So we have lots of people that work out of this building. So now you can see Tyler's doing two things at once. That's a sign of a good coordinated operator. And the advantage to that is that um, you can get a truck deployed faster to help people. So 
He's going down and retracting at the same time right now. Now, the other thing about this bucket that we're riding in, we don't have to adjust it at all. It, it auto levels. So it doesn't matter how high up we go or what angle we're at, this bucket will always be level so that it's safe for the firefighters. How'd you like to have to climb that ladder to get to work? So that's the nice thing about this truck is it does have the bucket so we don't have to climb the ladder all the time. Um, our second area, which I said was stationed on Lancaster Street at station two, it doesn't have a great big bucket like this in it. So what we have to do is if we want a firefighter on the end of the ladder, we have to set the ladder up where we want it and then the firefighter has to climb all the way up that ladder. And it could be a long way, like, like we were talking before, 30 meters. So Tyler's putting it, firefighter Tyler's putting it right back down on the truck and he has to be really careful coming down here. There's only a certain spot it can sit in. We call it a cradle. It's great big metal bars that hold it in place so that when we drive down the road. Oh, do you want to swing out and drop me off? Yeah, please. Um, so that when we're driving down the road, the ladder doesn't jump out because I'm pretty sure that wouldn't be too good. So Tyler's just going to swing a little more out and um, the other thing you may have noticed here is we have another ladder, can't quite reach it, another ladder right here strapped to the side and it has two big hooks on it. What we can actually do with this ladder um, is hook it to the front of our bucket and then if we have to go out of the bucket onto a roof, we can use that secondary ladder to go on the roof. Hello down there. This is my camera person, Jeff. I don't think anybody uh, saw Jeff yet because he's been behind the camera helping me. So Tyler's just going to take me down again so I can get out of here and I'm going to hand this off to cameraman Jeff now. Good night. And there we go, all safe and sound. Get my helmet off. Show you a couple extra ladders in the back of the truck here. So this this is one great big ladder that we use a lot. Sometimes we don't need a ladder quite as big as this. So we have a few uh, special ladders back here. Does that look like a ladder to you? It doesn't look like a ladder to me. Now it does. So this is a very special ladder. We call this an attic ladder. And sometimes if there's a fire in your attic, there's a small opening in the attic. So we can take this ladder in. We can go through the house and move through the house very easily with this ladder. And then when we get it up to where the attic is, we can just do what I did and climb up there. We don't use this one a lot outside because it is pretty small and we have our great big safety boots on. So it makes it pretty hard to climb. Is this one roof? So this one we call a roof ladder.
It has these special hooks on here that we can put it up against a building, put it up against the roof. These hooks will hook in and then uh, the ladder won't kick out when we're trying to climb up and get in. Then we have a couple more ladders in here and these ones are, they look just like this except there's two flies. So there's two ladders together that we can extend out to go up higher if we have to. But we're not gonna pull those out today. A couple of the other pieces of equipment back here. We have this one. And uh, no, we don't go fishing with it. We call this a pike pole. And it has a lot of uses, but one of the biggest uses is if there's a fire in a ceiling or a fire in a wall, we can hook it up in here, go through the drywall or th through the plaster and hook it down so that if something's burning up there or we have to get up there to put the fire out, we can make a big hole. So we have a bunch of these all in different lengths. This one's two meters. I think we can go all the way up to four meters, which is pretty long. So like I said uh, earlier, this truck can do a lot of things. It's not just a truck to spray water on. We can use it to rescue people. We can use it to uh, do higher low angle rescue, which is where we get in rope harnesses and rappel off to help people. Um, and sometimes too, especially during a fire investigation, we can put this ladder truck up and take pictures from way up high, which sometimes helps us determine what the cause of that fire is. So if you wanna come on inside now, we'll go into the lobby and we'll answer some of the questions you guys have asked. It's a little wee bit quieter in here, so I'll be able to hear, uh, hear the questions. So this is our lobby at fire headquarters. Uh, if you were to ever visit once COVID is over, this is the front door that you'd come in. And um, in that lobby, there's a phone that you can let our dispatchers know that you're here and then somebody will come out and greet you. Awesome, are you ready for the first question, Tom? I sure am. <laughs> Amazing, so the first question, it was uh, when you were up in the bucket and the question is, what does the big red button do? The big red button is an emergency stop. So if something were to happen up there that um, the, the person that's supposed to be controlling the truck couldn't control it anymore, or uh, one of the buttons was sticking and it was just starting to go on its own, you can hit that and that cuts all the power off to that uh, bucket up there so that it won't do it anymore. Awesome, the next question is, how do you become a firefighter? Oh, becoming a firefighter, number one, you have to stay in school. And then you have to go to more school and then you have to do a little bit more school. Um, so you, you go through and you get your grade 12 and then you have to go to college or some college somewhere that offers courses on be how to become a firefighter. And that's just the beginning. When the fire department hires people, we look for a lot of qualities. Uh, some of them are our examples are community involvement. So coaching a team, um, be involved in the community and helping uh, uh, maybe pick up garbage or helping at the community center when you're feeding some of the people, all those different kinds of things. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but a lot of the people that are on the fire department do a lot for the community outside of here. There's coaches and there's um, um, people like we do lots of work on our off days, not, not when we're working here, just because this is a sense of community to us and we like to help out the community. Awesome. So next question. So someone is wondering if all firefighter ladders are aluminum. Uh, yes, they are. We phased out the wood ones quite a few years ago. The aluminum ones are a lot lighter and a lot safer to use. So uh, we only use the aluminum. One. Actually, I forgot to show you. We actually have a little button, a sticker button on every ladder that if that ladder gets exposed to heat at a fire too much, that button will turn a different color and then uh, we know to take that out of service and get it tested to make sure it's still nice and strong so it won't collapse on us the next time we use it. Awesome. Next question. So Kayla from K2 is wondering why you have such long ladders. So we have long ladders for a few reasons. Um, our ones that I was showing you at the back of the truck, if you had a two-story house, 
we would use one of those to go up to the second story of a house. Uh, if you had a house taller than that, we would have to use an aerial ladder like, like the one that you just saw to get people up on the roof so that they could cut a hole in the roof and get all the smoke and the flames. Or if there was an apartment fire, which is really, really tall, we would use it to get up to the floors in the apartment. Awesome. Next question. So Ranveet is wondering where you get the water to put out the fires. So I, I'm sure you've seen them. We have uh, red hydrants on the boulevard. So that's the patch of grass that's really close to the street. There's a red hydrant and that hydrant has a is hooked up to the water system within the city. And when it's time for us to put a water in either our aerial truck, which you just saw, or the pump that's out there, we take these great big hoses off the truck. They're about this big around and we hook it to the hydrant and then we hook it to the truck and we turn the hydrant on and that's what lets the water go to the truck. Perfect. Next question. So Robin is wondering what make the aerial truck is. Oh, good question. Do you remember what it is, Jeff? La France? I, we'd have to go out there and look. Oh, Pierce, that's right. It's a Pierce aerial made by the Pierce Ladder Company. Mason and Austin would like to know, what is your favorite part of being a firefighter? There's many favorite parts, but I think most firefighters would probably tell you that the favorite part is being able to go out and help people when they need help. Awesome. Leslie would like to know, how fast does a fire truck drive? So all of our big fire trucks are actually regulated. They'll do a maximum of 110 kilometers an hour. Perfect. Does everybody out there know what to do if mom or dad is driving down the road and a fire truck with the lights on come behind them? That's right. Mom or dad should pull over to whichever side of the road is the safest for them to pull over and stop and let the fire truck or the police car or the ambulance drive by because when their lights are on, they're going to help somebody else. Great tip. So next question, Logan in grade four wants to know why you became a firefighter. So I became a firefighter um, for a few reasons. I actually started out as a volunteer firefighter. So lots of little towns have, uh, they don't have a full-time firefighter where they stay at the hall and they respond to calls all the time. Uh, they have what's called a volunteer firefighter. So I worked in the town of Elmira and I became a volunteer firefighter with the town of Elmira because I like to be part of the community and I like to help the community. And that's where I started. Once I did that for a few years, I realized that I really, really enjoyed it and that I wanted to do it for my work all of the time. So that's when I started to apply and I was lucky enough to get on Kitchener Fire Department. Awesome. So that looks like that's all the questions we have. However, since it is Emergency Preparedness Week, would you be able to share some emergency preparedness tips with us? Absolutely. It is Emergency Preparedness Week. Um, a few things that we recommend. One of the first things is you should have a 72 hour kit that can sustain your family for 72 hours in case of power outages or water problems or anything else. If you go online to either the City of Kitchener website or the Waterloo Regional uh, website, they have uh, some tips and tricks of what to put in that kit. The other thing that's uh, really, really important is to have some kind of a plan with your family that if this happens, this is where we're going to meet or this is where we're going we're gonna to go to meet up or this is how we're going to communicate. We actually have um, a couple more questions if you have some time, Tom. For sure. Yep. <laughs> Perfect. So uh, Mackenzie in grade four wants to know if you have any friends. <laughs> yes, I, I do have uh, quite a few friends. A lot of them are uh, firefighters and that kind of what happens in this job because it's shift work and you spend long time together, this becomes like a second family. So. Sometimes you'll come to work with your crew and then sometimes you do become friends with them and do lots of stuff outside of work. Amazing. Nora would like to know if firefighters help people at an accident before an ambulance arrives. Yes, we do. So the fire department, that's a great question. The fire department not only does fire calls, but we also do medical calls. So 
if something happens that somebody's sick or injured, so in a car accident, they're probably injured, then we would go and help. And we would help ambulance in case the car was banged up enough that they couldn't get the doors open or um, there was multiple patients. We would help ambulance and we can get the doors open. We have the jaws of life and some other things, which if you want to see, you can go to the City of Kitchener YouTube page. And we did a tour of the pump the other week and we talked about the jaws of life. Awesome. So we have a comment and also a couple questions from Mayor Barry Vervanovic. So he says, thank you for all of the men and women who are part of Kitchener Fire Department. Two questions. What was it like the first time you slid down the fire pole? And two, is it scary climbing up the ladder? So a couple things with uh, being, being on the fire department, you can't be afraid of heights because if you're afraid of heights, you won't do very good at this job. And when you're uh, looking to become a firefighter, they actually do some testing just to ensure that you're not afraid of heights. Um, to me, it wasn't very scary climbing up the ladder. My job before the fire department, I did lots of stuff where I worked at lots of heights. So the height part um, didn't bother me at all. Uh, and the pole, yes, so headquarters here. And again, we have a YouTube video of our, of our uh, pump. But if you want to go watch it, we also show our pole and some of the uh, firefighters sliding down the poles. And yeah, the fun part, that's a little bit of a fun part of this job. This hall has two stories. So our firefighters train and everything up there. If they get a call while they're training, then they would have to uh, come out and go down the pole. I think we have a few minutes. Maybe we could get, we could show you the pole. Hey, Ken. Would you mind uh, doing a page and having them come to the front pole there? That's great, uh, Mayor. Thanks for suggesting that. If you come back out to our apparatus floor. Oh, here's a platoon chief. Platoon chief's back. So there's our pole at uh, fire headquarters. This is the only um, building in, in the city, the only fire department building in the city that has a pole in it because it's the only one that's two stories. So we actually have two poles. We have one at the front of the building and one close to the back of the building. And if our crews were to get a call when they're upstairs, they will leave whatever they're doing upstairs, come down the hallway to the um, pole here, open the door and slide down. And I've been doing this a long time and it's still fun to slide down the pole. Oh, here they come. So I'll tell you the trick to sliding down the pole. If you saw Tyler there, he wasn't using his hands to control the speed. He was only using his arms to hold him onto the pole. It's your feet wrapped around the pole that um, controls your speed. And there we go. There's a whole bunch of them. Good job, guys. Thank you. Are you ready for another question, Tom? Sure am. Amazing. So Sophia in grade three wants to know how long you've been a firefighter for. I have been a firefighter for full time at Kitchener for 28 years. Amazing. Oh, I do have a shout out, though. I have to get my paper out. Oh, I forget where I put it. Oh, here it is. Here's a shout out to Carter in Mrs. Owen's kindergarten class at John Sweeney Catholic School. Hi, Carter. Amazing. So um, we have one more question. And the question is from Nicole. And it's how should I include my pets in my emergency plan? So we were talking about a 72 hour kit in your emergency planning. You should have enough water and any medication that your pet needs in there. And it'd be a really good idea to throw a leash in there too. Perfect. So that's um, all the questions that we have today. Okay, I have one last tip. Um, we have a program called Get Out and Stay Out. So uh, one of the things that you should practice with your older brothers and sisters and parents, depending what you have, is what you would do at your house in case you had a fire. 
So you should actually press your smoke alarm, let your smoke alarm go off, and then decide how to get out of the house. You should always know two ways out of any room or any place in your house, because if the fire is blocking one of your ways, then you would use the second way. But probably one of the two of the most important things. Number one is when you go outside, you should have a meeting place. Maybe it's the big tree in the backyard, or maybe it's a sign in the front yard. It's very important when we get there, that's the very first question we'll ask. Is there anybody in the house? And if all of your family goes to the meeting place, uh, mom or dad can very easily say, nope, nobody's in the house. That makes our job a lot easier. Um, and the second one is don't go back into the house. It doesn't matter what you have in there or what you leave in there. It's not more important than you are. So forget about it for now. And if we see it, we'll try and bring it out for you. So Hillary, if that's all of the questions, thank you everybody for coming today. I appreciate your time. Um, we're going to post this up on our YouTube channel. should be up early next week. So if you want to watch it again, or if you're telling your friends, maybe they want to watch it, they can go to the City of Kitchener YouTube channel and uh, click on the video and watch this. Thank you very much and have a fire safe day.